Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ohm School Live. We are here for, as some of our viewers are saying, so much love. <laughs> well, today really is going to, we're going to be calling upon some love for this topic. That is for sure. Today is called Photoshopped Reality. And we have Master Spiritual Teacher here, G.P. Walsh, who's going to be helping us with finding truth in a landscape of illusion. So when <laughs> this, this one, I, I love, I love, this was something I was really looking forward to, Photoshopped reality. And the more I thought about this, uh, GP, I wanted to come at this as it's, when we think we're Photoshopping something, maybe we think we're coming to a point we want to reveal or showcase something more acceptable, <laughs> more beautiful, more, yes. more, yeah, more acceptable. But in reality, are we maybe just really in behind the scenes Photoshopping our fears and what is unacceptable and so i wanted to bring that right out of the right out of the ball game here <laughs> oh wow well first I, I don't isn't it interesting that i could use that word as a verb yes photoshopping. i mean it's a noun it's a name of a product and it's become and it's become photoshopped it's now a verb yes <laughs> and it, it's enhanced basically you are making an image that isn't there you're creating an image to conform to an ideal that doesn't really exist and so you take yourself or whatever you're you're you're, you're doing and you make all the adjustments so it fits this model right? which means the the original is unacceptable at one, at one point in my career, um, uh, one of my clients was Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I, did, uh, I, I did some computer systems for them. Actually, a bunch of them. They were the main one, and there was a bunch of other ones as, as, as well. And um, I, I met a lot of the, not the supermodels, but a lot of the models. I met a lot of, I saw the process they actually went through. Right. I saw the original photos. I think it was the Angels campaign at the time, or something like that. Oh, how and I you. saw the and I saw the and I saw the the uh, the photoshopped versions, and they were night and day. You know, I mean, they were pretty pretty women. They were attractive women, but they were flawed. <laughs> little bulges here and little little imperfections there. All of that gone. Right. And it was so stylized. It was um, it was so narrowed down to create an ideal that nobody can live up to. As I said in the email, that's just the, the you know, the fashion industry and the cosmetics and stuff is just, is just the tip of the iceberg. We do it to, we do it to everything. I mean, what is Facebook but a bunch of people pretending to be somebody they're not? <laughs> right. And we do get to share the reality. We get to share our reality. Let's like, say with Facebook and, and something. And cosmetic companies, they're sharing, they're portraying this thing that you, you might achieve in your mind, in your reality and with the accepted reality. But then you get, kind of get lost in like, well, what is reality? Because that's what we're kind of we're going with here. And uh, in fact, I love that you said it's it's a model that we've fit something into this. Is these are the parameters that we're willing to accept so that everybody feels good. But do we feel good? Is no, is a big we question. don't. And and I often think about um, uh, chefs who you know not Photoshop but do their plating, and there's a certain model that their plating must fit into. And sometimes I think. I'll get this beautiful plate is I don't even want to eat it because it's so pretty or I don't know where to start because it's not normal how I would eat. And <laughs> right. it, 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 make, it makes it not just unaccessible, but un, almost not pleasurable. It, it, it doesn't somewhere in me, it doesn't feel right. So yeah. 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 How or you, the photography, the advertising photography of food. I mean, the stuff they're actually photographing isn't food. It's made stuff to make a look and the steam coming off it and stuff and, and stu stuff like that. It is basic. It's toxic. You couldn't actually eat the thing that they're, that they're photographing. I watched the show <laughs> on the melting cheese. It's not cheese when they show. Because you're like, how come my, my burger doesn't look like that? How come my grilled cheese sandwich doesn't pull apart? Yeah, because <laughs> you know, it's, it's like paint. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then why, why do we have these standards? So... 
okay, yes, this is where I want to go with standards and fears. Because if there's a standard set, I immediately go, Ooh, I, I might not make it. I might not make that standard. Right. And now I have a fear. It's immediately, it's, in, it's like, now do I yeah. do? <laughs> right? Well, yeah, that's, the, that's the, 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 the point that that's the, a standard is a, is a constriction of, of, of uh, possibilities. Right? And if I don't happen to fit in, in, into them, that very primitive fear of rejection, of abandonment, is going to is going to kick in. If there's no standard, there's no fear. If the standard is simply you as you are, then there's no fear. I don't have to work to be me. <laughs> I'm, I already am. Right? But there's, I mean, it's very very old. Um, uh, all of the Abrahamic religions start from that premise that you're fallen, you're you're a mess. You know, as you are, you're not even good enough to win your own pardon. Right. <laughs> Somebody else has got it. <laughs> and, and I mean, it, and it's just it's just logical that that would extend to, to everything. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I mean, I'm not enough. Period. Yes. And, and, end of story. And 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 because our need to belong, our need to be a part of the group, our need to be accepted is so strong. Anything that holds out a carrot of the potential of getting that is going to be almost irresistible. And marketing and advertising people know that. Yeah. I, I would like to just, uh, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the pain. That sounds horrible. Let's talk about the, the pain. <laughs> <laughs> that is associated with long-term photoshopping um and i'll use this example from for a moment i, I um this is decades and decades ago a friend who just so af af re afraid of revealing that their bank account wasn't what they mm -hmm. they wanted other people because the other people relied on them to have that bank account look like the part of having that bank account and the the stress you know, they should have gone bankrupt probably so much earlier than they had, but to it's so I'm using, it's not like Photoshopping, but it, but it is because it's yeah, still it we're, we're trying to hide that, but there's a pain associated so deep created by the Photoshopping. How long can we even sustain Photoshopping? <laughs> <laughs> like how, what, what makes us some people, do, some people do it their whole lives. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and now uh, cosmetic surgery, I mean, you can have real life photoshopping. That's true, yes. And they go on and on and on, and then sometimes they go a bit too far, and, you know, just because, you know, celebrities and like that don't want to age, right? Right. And, and in fact, it's not that they don't they just want to. I think it was Isabella Rossellini, you know, just this beautiful woman. She was the, um, she's an actress and a model. She was the... She was the model for L'Oreal, and um, she lost her contract with them. And they said, "What happened?" She says, "I made the mistake of turning 40. Oh, <laughs> that's like so embedded in there, like that. Yeah, I mean, she, it was simply she at that age done, right? right? <laughs> Do we Photoshop what's not? Because so I'm looking at that situation. She felt that. Not she felt, sorry, the company, her employers felt that she was no longer purposeful. She, her use was done, completed. Correct. Does Do we Photoshop the things that we feel don't have a purpose or just are purely not acceptable? Well, you have to see that the, the, that the purpose is horrid and distorted, yes. right? I mean, the, the, their purpose is to instill within people a feeling of inferiority that somehow their product is going to correct. Uh, That's the whole point of it. Problem right? solution. <laughs> right? They create the problem and offer you the solution. It's mm -hmm. that simple. They create the disease and then offer you the cure. Right? And, and, and as, as long as that becomes uh, ingrained enough in the culture, I mean, they, they don't have to try to sustain it anymore. And now it is. It's just, it's pervasive. You can't get away from it. And, and now it's, it's not just women, it's men. I mean, I've seen a couple of videos on, on how they Photoshop the men and the like. Um, and and it, it covers everything. It, it is, it, it is our, a fear to be ourselves as we actually are, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was, yes, it was Picasso 
who said, artists and lovers know the beauty of imperfection. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when, oh, what's that? Hold on. The, okay, so we don't know ourselves. Let's say we have not done a lot of self-inquiry. We're, maybe we're starting. We have lots of people here that are just starting or have done this for so long. Is it that the more we get to know ourselves or do the self-inquiry, we just suddenly, does it just, we become, we accept ourselves or do we just know we don't care anymore or do something actually change? Like, is there a Yeah, shift? well, eventually, remember, it's all a matter of perception, right? The, you know, the, the, the person who is anorexic has a, has a perceptual distortion. They look in the mirror, and it doesn't matter how skinny they are, they see a fat person. Now, that's a perceptual distortion. They're not actually seeing what is there. Or the focus of attention, you know, somebody will look, and their focus will be on that one body part that's bad, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that fills the whole screen. You can't see anything other than that. These are perceptual distortions. Um, if, with self-inquiry and doing that kind of inner work, you get you get dominion over these perceptions. You see that the perception is just a perception, and it, thus it loses its its grip on you. It can't it, it can't suck you into that story, and then you, and you then you begin to see that the different models, the different ideas, the different ways of looking at it are all artificial. Mm -hmm. You see through the whole delusion that is our modern culture. And from there, you begin to step into self-acceptance. You begin to see yourself as an absolutely unique in all space and time uh, being. And, and you, you gradually drop the comparisons with others and, and that and the like. And of course, as you do that, you will, you will become aware of your inherent beauty. And that will have an effect on the physical body. It, the way you show up, the way you carry yourself, uh, all, of which, all of which project this feeling of confidence and, and presence that is what people really do find beautiful. Right? It's very attractive, because energetically we want to be that. Yes. But without the inner work, we can't. We cannot see past the the facade. We cannot see. We have no criteria for 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 feeling or perceiving on a deeper level, and that's why the work is absolutely uh, absolutely essential. We always suffer from distorted perceptions. We're not seeing things as they are, and at the essence of it, we're not seeing ourselves as we are. If you see yourself as you are, you can't help but be filled with self-acceptance and love. You can't. <laughs> I, I was it's just not possible ask, anymore. <laughs> I was just going to ask, can, can you, have we, or can we Photoshop energy? Like, you can't, I don't think you can. So that's why I was saying that, like, no. who you are energetically, it's, you can't Photoshop you can't, and go. <laughs> no, you, you can't con the universe. <laughs> 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 it sees right through that nonsense. <laughs> yes. It's a different language, I think, that we're unable to um, confuse or mix up. And and I like that you're highlighting it's a perception. If you, you, you go in one part of the country and it uh, image is beautiful one place, you take that same image and go to another part of the country and they're like, oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not, you know. So Marilyn it, Monroe is a size 12. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> made these um why have we gone downhill so to speak I, I am sure there's such lovely things out there as well but with a lot of our models that we're following how why have they become so hurtful painful distorted in a negative way well it's cultural of course right it's cultural of course um we have when when you don't know what you are, when you really don't have a solid sense of your own a sense of identity and therefore self-worth, you're going to be thrown hither, thither and yon. 
It's inevitable. You're going to be easily manipulated. You're going to be easily seduced um, because there's no criteria there for uh, for in, uh, for assessing anything from a position of truth, right? Therefore, the place from which you are assessing it is extremely unstable, right? And is forever shifting. Right? So now you're always seeing the world from this different from this this place. That happens individually. It happens culturally. The, and the more the more the cultural culture gets divorced from anything that's concrete, a reference point that's reliable, and the only one we have is is nature, the earth. Right? That's the reference point of of life. But the the ego has gotten so detached from that that it's creating a reference point that has no stability to it, and and it, it can hold for a while when there's a when there's kind of a tacit agreement with it. But as that begins to collapse, it has to hold on through force, and that's that's why we see we see Christianity in particular becoming increasingly uh, aggressive, and and um, and uh, dogmatic and fundamental and and judgmental, uh, be, because that that not the actual teachings of Christ, which have nothing to do with Christianity as it uh, as it has become. Um, but because it has become completely irrelevant in this world, right, it enforces itself through fear and pain. The same thing happens with the the, the political system. You know, the U.S. is all over the United, all over the world, aggressively with the military. Why? Because it's failed. <laughs> and when a system fails, right, and it's on its last leg, it gets aggressive to try to sustain it, to try to 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 re, to recover the sense of stability that it once had. But if it had been truly stable, if it had been grounded in truth, it would be stable and you wouldn't have to defend it and, <laughs> and it wouldn't shift on you. But there's no such thing as a culture that's rooted in truth. That's yet to come. There's still hope. <laughs> you, you mentioned, I love that about um, when, maybe that's how we can start recognizing when things are being photoshopped because it's being re it's being enforced or reinforced with pain and fear so if we're feeling if we when we do that just even that inquiry of what am i feeling if we feel fear come up or pain come up then is that a place to start with a self inquiry of saying okay what where does this fear and pain feel like and is that how we can follow the thread you know of where yes. Perhaps <laughs> this Photoshop's being done. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Because you know, photo, the photoshopping, right, as a metaphor, is simply I'm, I'm presenting a version of me that's not really me, right. And the only reason I do that is because I'm afraid, right. I'm afraid that I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be left out. I'm going to be thrown aside, kicked to the curb. And so we present that which is acceptable. I mean, this is, this is so primal in us. It's what kids do all the time, right? <laughs> this, is the, this is the essential, the existential crisis we all, we all ex experience. We have to become somebody we're not. And, and in our modern media-saturated world, that the images we can see can be com so completely divorced from any degree of any degree of reality, um, and presented as if it was some kind of truth, right? So you got the guy standing there with, you know, two supermodels on his arms in front of his ten cars in front of the big mansion, right? Selling his program on how to get rich on the internet, right? And, and most of those are pure scams. They're lies, <laughs> right? Yeah. They stood in front of some house in a neighborhood, right? <laughs> Hired a couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's really quite funny to give that impression, right? And, yeah. and yeah, I, I just have to keep getting it, getting it back. We, if we can, instead of trying to 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 participate in the ruse, and instead turn around to look at the fear itself, mm -hmm. you can trace it all the way back to its origin, and that was simply it was rejected as a child. It, it's it's, I, I mean it, it's it sounds mind-numbingly simple because it is, it is it all stems from that, 
this this entire culture would be completely different if that if that wasn't the case if if yeah. there was a if the, all the people were growing up with total self, with, in, with self acceptance accepting themselves as they are comparing themselves to nobody we would not be living in the world we're living in yes and story <laughs> i have this perfect example to share and i will have a question about it cuz now i'm wondering so i have um well, we all have friends and we all want to go have tea at our friend's house or something or visit. <laughs> and I have um, one absolutely wonderful girlfriend and she's a, a lovely home and she will go like spend three days, you know, prior to cleaning it and preparing this to serve and food and everything. But then when I'm going to come over, she's like, Oh, you can come over anytime. I don't have to clean for you. <laughs> and no, that's a friend. I yeah, and of course I was like, hey, wait a second, I'm a queen. No, 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 no. Yeah. And, but I, it, it was such a compliment to say, you can see me as I am. I don't have to put my makeup on or clean. I'll just come over whenever you need to come over. That's fine. And and that's so interesting because some other people, I'm, you know, could have say, said, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm special. She spends three days cleaning for me and goes and buys all the special food and delicacies. But um, her it's not mother. not for you, baby. It's for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she was raised, you know, you prepare your home. Now, so this is not to go against any beautiful, you know, honoring or ceremony or, you know, like if, right. you know, yeah. like I like to snazzy things up too. There's some people I just went on walking in there. But how, where's that line of, it, yes, it's acceptable to spend the three days to clean up. You're having a party and some guests over and you want to make it special. Or is it where they say, no, you absolutely cannot come over. Uh, my house is a mess and I will meet you at the coffee shop. Like, is, is that a pro like, where does that, how do we know when we're like insane or something <laughs> about it? Well, you have to inquire into it, right? If, if it's a matter of, it's a matter of, um, you know, somebody shows up unexpected and they see you as you are and it's, and it's, and it's, create suffering well there's something to explore there right I, I mean it really is does it suffer or not i mean sometimes you know this place is a disaster let, let's meet at the coffee shop and it's <laughs> and it's a fact you know <laughs> you know and it this gets this way if i'm in the middle of some kind of a project you know this place is a disaster <laughs> you know and then you know because i like it neat I will then, after you know, friends, I will just put everything away and I'll get it back and I'll vacuum, I'll do all the, all the things to get it back, and then some other project will come and it'll all go to hell in a handbasket again. Right. right. So it's that comfortability of saying it will go into like, oh, I love the the, the flow that we talk about this way, and then a little bit this way, and yes. so it can be an explosion, a mess. But then you know, so if somebody showed up and you know you haven't shaved or whatever, um, or a pro a project's not done, let's just say you have a deadline. And a project's not done because we have a little bit of perfectionism. Because if we think we submit that project, the client may walk or they might see that you didn't do it well enough. If Now, that causes suffering, I would think. But it also causes suffering when you cannot turn it in. You cannot, you know, when you're doing a, a if you've ever done an album or recorded, you want to keep going and trying and fixing and doing. But yes. you like, you got to publish it. You got to put it out. So yes. is it when it causes that kind of suffering that it's... um debilitating or just so afraid of the ants the, the the judgment I, I mean the, our fears are at the root of all of our suffering right? mm. fear and desire right <laughs> and they go hand in hand right when 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 they're personally owned and d distinguishing between the the, the fear that is simply the organism interacting with the environment, which means there's an immediate danger that I have to deal with, is that's completely different than the, the psychological and emotional fears that are all caused by anticipation and identification, right? And we're anticipating being rejected, and therefore we're, and that triggers the primal fear. The primal fear is very real, right? Because, because human beings are, are, are social critters, right? We, 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 we need each other, right? We, we evolved that, uh, that way. And so it is very important for us to conform. Yes. But this is the balance, right? A healthy culture, like the primitive hunter-gatherers, it was a balance between your role within the community 
and your individual nature. There was always this flow that was allowed, right? So one's talents would be recognized, right? And, and then those talents would be used for the benefit of the whole, right? But it was, it was not our modern way, which is to take people and conform them into a system that doesn't acknowledge them in the slightest. That's the whole Industrial Revolution, where, where they literally created, like the potato famine in, in Ireland was created by the British to force them into cities to get them to work in factories. Mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was for. And, and, and so you, you know, they, they wanted people to become uh, machines for them, basically slaves. And, you know, you know this, the, our current economic system is just a very, it's just kind of a different form of slavery. There's no real freedom in it. What do we do when we, we've, we've done some self, we've self-inquired and we found out, wow, I've been Photoshopping this. I've got some fears here. And let's just say we, we tap through them. We use some energy work and we're, we're tapping, we can tap through them. And then we're feeling pretty good. Like we're, we're magical. We've done it. It's instant. Voila. And then we step back out into the world, which holds the model, which is expecting the con conform conformity, <laughs> expecting us to mm -hmm. conform. And mm -hmm. then now we've worked through that original field, but now we have this other fear that's now about going, great, I've worked through it. And now I'm, they're not accepting me still. Do I, right. what do you do? Well, yeah, the, then, well, first off, there, there's, there's two parts of it. If you're in the position where you have done done the inner work and now you are conscious of it, you can consciously make concessions to it. Right? That's very different than than unconsciously conforming. A concession is not a conformance. It is simply an acknowledgement, and it is the, it, that in this moment the wise thing to do is is this. And simultaneously, there is a need to grow to an, another level of 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 spiritual maturity, where you can endure the re the rejection, because it, it it no longer is the threat, right? I'm not going to die, and yes, I may end up alone for a while. Okay, I accept that, because the because I can't do anything else. I, I can no longer sacrifice myself for that. If the concession I'm asked to make is too great then I have to be willing to be with the consequences of that, which could be, which could be a, a banishment, it could be an exclusion, it could be a rejection. But the, the deeper the work goes, the more you're able to, to deal with that, because it's a fact of life. And when you realize that avoiding that is what makes you, is what makes you a slave, when you can confront that directly, you are free of the demands. You're now living life on your own terms. You you made me think of uh, breakups and breaking up with somebody, but then I took it to a little bit more um, family. Like, is a lot of times we might recognize that to in order to fit into our own families, oh, we just can't make they're those the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. and <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it any longer, but then we, we have it's that it's that work to say, well, I might have to leave this model. I can no longer conform to this one. Photoshopping is done. <laughs> and and I you want to see the real you again. And then there is that, that yeah. fear that wow, I I'm abandoning my family. I'm leaving them, or well, what will others think of me for being such a horrible person for doing this? But there, yeah, there's a lot wrapped up in dropping the photoshopping yeah. act. Yeah, you you have to. At some point, at some point, the suffering caused by by the by the conformity is greater than the suffering of leaving it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you just really have have no you have no choice. You know that's the that's the moment in the hero's journey where you, you just you have no choice. You have to leave it. Right? It's just, it, it's just excre you will, you can never be happy there, right. right? Essentially happy, right? You know, you can have moments of, you know, of, of happiness. There's the temporary happiness, and there's the happiness that's just, the, that is essential. It is the happiness that comes from simply being yourself, the effortlessness, the, the sweetness of just being yourself unapologetically. 
there, there's the that's the ticket right there. It's um, mm -hmm. funny when you think you mentioned the word skill, you know, and your skills that you have. And if we start photoshopping right from a reality, right from a child, we can never reveal be, our skills are never revealed. And and there's, I think, an oppression that just kind of happens uh, from the voice, you know, who am I, to being able to express that skill that, that we, we're here to have and share and enjoy. Yeah, that's the whole point. Uh, your uniqueness is your value. And, but the culture doesn't want your uniqueness. It, it wants you to fulfill a role within the culture. And it, it, and it has, gives no acknowledgement to the individual. I mean, it pays lip service, you know, individual liberty and all that sort of stuff. But it's bullshit. It's a lie. Right? It, you know, the, the idea is you are to become enculturated through school, everything to the where you simply fulfill. Your whole purpose for life is to fulfill the obligations the culture has laid upon you. And these days that means, uh, that means basically economic. Just that word, obligations. <laughs> yeah. I'm obligated, tied to, have to. Yeah, have to. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And it's no longer, you know, it's the gun's not to your head, but in a sense, it is because if you don't, you you basically you have no income, and you have to have income to survive. So it really is a form of slavery. <laughs> yes. Yes. It has been brought, and and it feels like that. Yeah. Um, it does. Because it is. <laughs> so I, I like the steps there. That's the first thing is to become conscious of it, to be aware, like, wow, okay, this is showing up in my life here, here, and here, here. Do we, do we just kind of make a list and then like tap through them one at a time? Like, what's, what's the best way to? Well, y you can, and the way most people teach tapping, that's you know, that's what you do. You just go, you just go through the symptoms until they're not there anymore. Um, but. When you're doing uh, when you're doing it as a part of inner reconciliation and self inquiry, um, you're trying to get to the root of it, right? Because we can tap away symptoms all day long, but but the symptoms are arising from a root. They're, they have a, they have a fundamental cause, right? And that is, if that fundamental cause isn't dealt with, you'll just have one symptom after another. It'll just appear someplace else, right? So, and the, the fundamental cause is always the sense of identity. It is always who you think you are, who you've come to believe yourself to be. And it is the subtlest of all beliefs, because <clears throat> we don't even think about it. It's a belief that's hiding behind your eyeballs. <laughs> what would be some examples of who we might believe we are versus when we do that work and we do these self-inquiry what does it kind of feel like or sound like when we do know who we are? Peace, uh, a, a contentment that's hard to describe. Um, you're you're slow to you're slow to anger. You're very deliberate. Um, you seem to have access to resources that others don't. <clears throat> you're patient. You're compassionate because you're unthreatened. Right. When you know who you are. You're talking about the truth, which is the only stable place anybody can build. <clears throat> and so while the entire culture may be completely unstable, you're not, because you're now in the truth of you. <clears throat> and that's, it's, that doesn't shift. That doesn't change. So you now become, you, you can't be threatened. You know? And ultimately, there is no fear. Right. And, and that's None. a very, and that's a very different feeling. So unthreatened, not like I'm the most powerful, strongest, I'm standing on the mountain with my, you know, lightning. <laughs> it's, it's not an overpowering if um, unthreatened, um, like you can't touch me, like untouchable. It's an unthreatened as I have so, I have endless. Uh, there's so much peace. There's so much in me that doesn't, like you can't be taken from, you can't be made small, you can't be littled, you can't lose yeah, anything. Exactly. Yeah, you can't Happiness. lose anything. Yeah, right. You cannot. So you can't be intimidated. You you can't be forced into into, into anything. Um, because you know who you are. You know the truth of you, and that means, and that means you are you have built on the rock and not on sand. Because the truth doesn't change. 
it is the only stable thing there is. So the truth of you is the only stable thing there is. <laughs> Anything less than that is going to feel unstable, and that's where the fear and desire arrive, arise from. Right. Yes. Like if we're walking and all of a sudden the ground is a little bit unshaky, you're going to feel unstable, and then if the fear comes up, oh, I fall. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's my feeling. I love that you really focus in um, when we do any kind of, whether it's just a, a guided meditation or the self-inquiry, it always begins with what is the feeling? And yes. and when we do that, when we close our eyes and we do what, what is the feeling, um, do were we focusing on a, 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 like a, a part of the body or that we feel like is calling our attention or it, just more of a gut feeling? Well, this is a skill to get to learn this kind of allowing um, the the need is to be with the feelings and the process is you, the attention goes to the feelings and then you notice that that there's a feeling and then there's all the story and ideas and beliefs about the feeling right mm -hmm. yes. and before you before you ever try to do this these two are so intertwined that you don't know that they're two you think that my, my, my ideas, my story about what's happening is in fact what's happening. My ideas about or concept of my feelings are my feelings because they arise and the story arises and it's so fast that it appears as though it's one thing. But when you, when you, when you meditate just on the feeling itself and keep the attention there and notice that the thoughts are there and then inquire and recognize that the thoughts had to have come second. The feeling had to have been there first, right? The thoughts, it didn't work the other way around. The feeling is much more primary, right? So, okay, so now the feeling is there first. This feeling was there before there were any thoughts. So why are the thoughts the way they are? Well, they could have gone in a million different directions. There's nothing absolute about these, this concept of the feeling. It's gotten stuck together. It's gotten so associated in me that I think it means this. But had I been slightly different circumstances when I was younger, it would have meant this. So this isn't true. <laughs> this isn't the truth. And so now, so now I'm going, well, wh what is the truth? Well, the truth is at least I'm closer to the truth in the feeling than I am in the mind. So my attention goes more and more into the feeling itself. And more and more of the story about it just starts to fall away. Because you see, it's, it's secondary. This is direct path. This is a direct inquiry into the feeling itself. And, and if you pursue that far enough, you find that the actual traumatic material or the, the, the real energetic distortion, whatever it is, emerges right from there where you find that the mind is all analytical in stories about it and trying to interpret it, but the actual information is, is right there. It knows why it's the way it is. The mind doesn't. <laughs> and so the more you're with it, the more it reveals itself to you. The more you're willing to be with it without rejecting it, even if it's extremely uncomfortable, the safer it is, which means the more that can come to the surface. And, and really, sometimes you, have, you, can pro you process what comes to the surface with EFT, but more often than not, you don't have to. The, the act of it coming to the surface, you can, just, you can just stay with it, and it will just dissipate. It'll just go. You don't have to do anything at all. Uh, because you're, what you're doing is you're simply creating the inner environment for the energy to do what it was, its nature is to do, which is to adapt to the environment. If the environment's safe, it disposes of everything. It, 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 it had all the behaviors it created to keep it safe when it wasn't, right? But if you create a safe environment, it doesn't need them, throws all those behaviors out. Boom, trauma's gone. <laughs> And you didn't have to do anything except show up and shut up. <laughs> and and this is back to the very first word you said, allowing. Uh, it, that jumped yeah. out of me more than ever. You do have the yoga of allowing. And I, I will talk about that just in a moment, everybody. Um, but you just helped me realize right now that 
how we Photoshop in our lives. It's our story. Our story story is the Photoshopping. Yes. I get that now. So every belief, every idea, every concept, every story we have is Photoshopping the feeling so that we can present that to somebody with whichever identity <laughs> that we feel will yes. keep us the safest <laughs> and the yes. most accepted and, and loved. And I like that you bring up about being able to sit with that discomfort because I, I can, I'm, uh, I grew up with a very sick mother. And every time she went to the doctors, which was once a month, and it was, I, you know, it was like, oh, well, she needs to make sure she has a story about is she well or getting better or sick. And, and she relied on that story. She would, there are some of us, we actually rely on other people's photoshopping of us. We rely on the story that others are holding of us because we're allowing them, we're waiting to say, do you like that story? Did that story work for you? And then do you accept me? Like, so you keep that story. You keep that story going of me. And don't <laughs> let me fall from that pedestal story <laughs> because then I won't be accepted. Oh, it's absolutely true. One of the most incredible powers, which is uh, which is symbolized by the, the, the fifth chakra, is the capacity to create an image of yourself in somebody else's mind. And we, we want that because that's how we reinforce it. Because it's so, this it is a story. And if we're with the story, when you're really with the story, you can feel how unstable and shaky it is. It is not reliable. So if I can implant it into a bunch of other people who keep feeding me back, I feel more stable. In fact, I'm getting further and further away from, from the truth of me. But this is what we do. We tell our stories to others. I mean, how many conversations you have with somebody and they go right into their story? Right? And you can listen to a story and then say, yeah, I know. And you know what happened to me? And before you know it, there's just a pity party going on, right? <laughs> exactly. And it is. It's a reinforcing it. I think that was so beautiful. And the, the allowing, I'm just going to pull this in as we go to our quote-unquote recess break, um, where I get to <laughs> go back into reading the comments you guys are leaving, um, is about um, the, allow, uh, the allowing, um, the allowing the feeling to reveal it's the truth and allowing the stories and those to, to just dissipate and to dissolve. Yeah. So that, I love that. Does yoga of allowing, I, I, I think, I feel like everybody could step into the yoga of allowing, but it, it is something that's, uh, that is on Thinkific. Um, but would, I don't even know how to direct people to this one actually. So <laughs> if there is a, there is a beautiful program that GP does, it is called the yoga of allowing. Um, and if you're interested in that, we'll, we'll put some, I'll put some details there. I just know that that's like, that word is so strong for me right now, allowing. Yeah. Well, it, all of the, um, I don't have it here. Really. Let me, I can edit it really quick okay. because it's really, it's really very simple. Um, it's just, I just want to make sure you guys have access to these, these tools, whether they're, they are videos that GP does or something that you read from him. Um, they're just helpful to walk through these. That's it. Homeschool.com. Sorry. When oh, it's home? not. Uh, it's co. Yeah. Co. <laughs> it's, it's co. Yeah. No M. <laughs> it's, it's homeschool.co. Co. Perfect. Co. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we are co -doing yeah. And together. that's, that's the entire category, a catalog of all the courses that are currently available. Oh, and um, the yoga of allowing is one of the is one of the you know the primers to get into inner reconciliation, and I and I coined that phrase because it is very much like uh, like the the asanas of yoga uh, in hatha yoga, right? Not vinyasa where the flow and it's more athletic. It's the you know the kind of yoga where you get into a pose and you hold it for a while, right? And the whole idea is to just kind of watch the body as it's adjusting itself, right? So eventually it gets all the right motions, the right muscles, everything is in, and it can hold it absolutely perfectly. Same thing like riding a bike, right? There's a million little corrections that it has to make that at first it can't, but eventually it can, I mean, there's literally thousands of tiny corrections going on to keep you upright on that bike. And in yoga, that's the, the same thing. There's thousands of little corrections going on to keep the pose in exactly the right place. And then you notice your so shoulder is sagged, and you're, you know. And, but eventually, the whole thing just kind of comes into a, into a, 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 uni a unity, right? And it, it's a perfect model for allowing because it, it's just an internal posture. It's an internal asana where you are taking this position of simply of being present with what you're feeling. 
And the, the old habit is to run away and the like, which is kind of like falling out of the pose, and you keep bringing yourself back into it. Right? Until you're able to hold yourself there, in the presence of even the most difficult material coming to the, coming to the surface, because you've practiced the asana. Right? And that's why I, I grab that term, because it's, it's exactly the same. It's just completely, it's just a completely inner posture. Right, because it doesn't matter what 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 um, what uh, position your body is in to to do this. You can do it anytime. I absolutely love that an internal posture. Oh, that was so good. Uh, it, you reminded me of something that I forgot. Actually, I used to, used to do as a, as a young woman. So you know, nineteen twenties and stuff. Whenever I had um, an, um uh, let's call it what could have been or was going to be a trauma. Who knows? Um, I would shake. Like I, I even talking about it with somebody who I was very safe with, like my mother or something, uh, and and revealing something that oh my gosh, this happened to me, and I'm upset about it. I'm scared. All these things. I would shake uncontrollably, and I couldn't like stop it. But it was. I think it's because th that all those little muscles were probably going. <sighs> Ah, we'll go, run, get away from this. Like, <laughs> no, don't talk about this. And um, I, yeah. I, don't anymore. I, I totally forgot that I even used to do that. That's so weird. <laughs> I guess I guess I self-inquired some most of it away, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, some of the stuff we just we just outgrow as we as we mature, some of the stuff falls away. It's the stuff that lingers that we have to pay attention to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And if there's anything lingering, we would love to help you with this or, you know, at least point <laughs> you into a direction that might help you. So this is the point where on Ohm School Live <laughs> that we take a, we've had, you know, a recess. I'm happy to have invited you over to ohmschool.co uh, and to just have a look through those catalogs, see what goodies are in there. Something will call to you. I know it. Um, but we'll read through the comments now, uh, see what questions or, or things have come up. And I know that Mary was sharing quite a bit early there. I'm going to go back. Yeah. And Robert and Jennifer and everybody here. So, okay, and so my new daughter-in-law had a photo photoshopped with a friend who does photoshopping, and their pictures looked like two. To continue to Re read the next one, just the next one down. Oh, they look like they look like two mannequins. Two mannequins. There we go, two mannequins. <laughs> yes, and and you know what's interesting with actual photos. We have a story about how we want to remember those photos and and so it it's yeah to each our visual thing we want to remember that we you know we didn't have that big zit or um, food in our teeth or extra 10 pounds or whatever it is like or that it wasn't so sunny it was <laughs> just throw a little bit of sunshine in there you know and unicorn yeah. floating around too please yes <laughs> <laughs> and, but you can do anything with these with these digital digital things and um yeah you can and Mary was sharing. I that. mean, I even saw I saw one video where the guy literally took a pizza and photoshopped it into a woman. The pepperoni Whoa. became became the bikini. Um, <laughs> oh my god! I mean, god. just taking piece parts and reshaping them. He he, yeah, he took a slice of pizza and then it was this woman. That's 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 fun, but but wow! It's fascinating. <laughs> It's fascinating. fascinating, but it's like, okay, well, um, wow. <laughs> we used to say, you know, the, you know, the photo doesn't lie. No, and it lies all the time. That's yeah, true. It never that's tells the truth oh, anymore. That's right. The photo, that's what we need. The camera yeah. never lies. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Mary continued on here um, just about, you know, different beliefs about ourselves. I was all, she was also anorexic and she learned a lot about self-hatred from that experience and. Yeah, that's our those are symptoms, right? The anorexia would have been a symptom. Yes, of yeah. I, I, oftentimes, something like that is it's somebody, somebody for whatever reason just does not feel like they have any control in their life, and they need need a feeling of control, and they find there is something they can control. They can stop eating. <laughs> they can control that, um, and. Uh, and, and, and it's true, but I mean, obviously, you, you want to get back the sense of the mastery and dominion of your own life. Mm -hmm. right? and, and not just one little corner of it, right? I mean, that's, that's really what we're crying out for. We're all crying out for that, you know? We, we, we all want a more just world in, 
in which I in which I am free to actually realize so to self actualize to realize my potential and not be forced to serve others' interests. Right? That's a, this is what we all want, and and so when that doesn't happen. We, we try to grab onto something that we can control and therefore we become religious and evangelical or become a racist or a misogynist. We take on these kinds of characteristics to give ourselves some kind of a sense of power. And, and, then, and then, I, then I, which justifies all sorts of horrid, horrid behavior, right? Um, but it's, it becomes uh, uh, justified. And it, the enemy becomes, you know, this is the enemy that's taken that away from me. The truth is, nobody has taken anything away from it, from you. You have simply been seduced into giving it away. Ooh, yes. The devil Ooh. can't make you do anything. He's got to convince you that you want to. Yes. Oh, that was so good. That would be, I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to ask this. Is that a, is that a self-inquiry question or just a question? Um, where in my life... Have I been seduced in giving my power away, or is that just more of a question? No, that's a way of yeah. I mean, to recognize every time we, we say it all the time, I have no choice. Yes, you do. Ah, yes. Ooh. It's never true. The, the thing is, is that there may not be a choice available to you that you like. <laughs> <laughs> that's different, <laughs> right? You know, it's, I have to work because I have to have money. Okay, you you, know, you don't have to, you don't have to work, and but if if you're going to do that, you have to bear the consequence of it. But it's empowering, even if you have you you choose continually choose to do it because I'd rather work a job I hate than to be on the street. To recognize I'm making that as a choice is very empowering. That's very different than saying I have to do it. Right? What you're really saying is, I don't have any options available to me that I like. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you recognize that that's the case, you're naturally going to start looking for options that you do like. It's going to happen, right? Inevitably. But if it's just, I hate it and there's no way out, well, then there's no way out. Cause, cause it, because there's no way out? No, because you said there was no way out. We are, we are infinitely powerful. This is why you have to be seduced to give away your, your, your power. Because it's your power. <laughs> your inner authority, and I don't mean by power, power over others. I mean your inner authority, which is only activated when you know who you are. <laughs> you know, I, I have been in some situations in my life where I literally, and I'm sure everybody here has that. You like, I, I don't have a choice. I, I, re and seduced to give that power away. And there's one, one I have to share. This is that I, um, I met a lady who, it was, it's such a tough one still. I can't, don't even want to make a judgment on it. But she was um, hoarding cats, and you guys all know that I just love cats so much. And so there's, there's a story like, well, they need her help, and other ones as well. This is a little too much, and I was completely seduced into um, helping this lady to a point where I was now like now I'm doing things like never thought I, I would do um, giving stuff and, and really like I didn't want to take care of all these hundreds of cats either and so I thought if I left I have no choice I have to stay now but you know it's so interesting how I did eventually have to leave that situation <laughs> and things will work I won't say work out things will go on life will go on think other things you I couldn't hold the whole thing together by myself, and but I was making that choice. Yeah. I thought it was in my, I had to, I had no choice, but I just yes. didn't like the choice. You know, I didn't, yeah. That's the truth, yes. You, you didn't like the idea of leaving them with her, right? Because right. there's just no way they could have been well Take taken care of, care of yeah. right? Um, but, the, but that also take, took so much from you Right? Mm -hmm. Neither was a good choice. Neither was a happy choice. And, and so we find ourselves um, you know, choosing the, the lesser, right? the lesser painful. Um, but if we recognize that it is always a choice, something inside opens up to say, okay, well maybe there's a way I can, I can create some better choices, some better options. <laughs> yeah. yes. and, but and as long as I believe it's not my choice, that that's not that's not going to be available. 
The mind, you, you, the, you, your attention just won't, can't, won't go there because you've already said it doesn't exist. And the attention will, oh, okay. And it will completely pass over any opportunity that might show up. That was a golden nugget right there, everybody. I have to say that if you say there's no choice, it, yeah, you are not open to and it won't reveal itself. Possibilities will not show up. They can't. You, yeah. That's, they can't. That is so you won't true. see them. You, you won't see them. They could bite in the ass. And you'll just go, ow, ow, and, and, and off you go. I mean, you won't pay any attention to it. You know, the, the opportunity that could be staring you right in the face, you simply won't see it. Yeah. Because you've already made up your mind that it doesn't exist. And then by opening that door and saying, well, doing some self-inquiry work, um, it just, it does, it, it, you, don't, it, you don't have to find the answer. You don't have to look for it, but now you're just open to it. And I like easy. yes, the energy is opening, and if the energy is opening, the 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 nervous system, the attention, gets the message that okay, you're now to take in this. Whereas before it was saying don't take in this, right? And it's just a mechanism. You go take this in. Oh, okay, and it opens the lens. It's it really is that simple, and it happens automatically. You don't have to you don't have to make it happen you don't have to do anything except recognize that you have been you have been constraining yourself and you know this can this and sometimes that can be quite radical I, I I mean you know the women as second class citizens you know you can't do that because you're a woman right right and look how long it took for women to challenge that and say you know that's bullshit <laughs> and it is right but so many people said well i can't do that because i'm a woman right and of course it was never true right it was never ever true but because the belief was so strong the 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 opportunity to prove it false was never of thought of as an option but little by little you know some radical leaders show up and say yes it is an option what are you talking about right? <laughs> And then, of course, culture reacts because culture wants things to stay they were, you know, stay the way they were. Women should be. We're heading back there. I mean, <laughs> Abrahamic religions. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, the the uh, beauty with this all is that we can witness in life in our in our all the trans transformations actually along the way in culture. I think that that yes, possibly the lens has been opened up, and then whether somebody else sees it and they inspire you to open up or you do that work on your own and then you are called to look. I just, I love that we can, you know, if we, if we can start there, it's like, look at your life and just say, Hmm, where am I perhaps photoshopping? You know, where does it feel some, some fear or some, you know, out of control or misalignment and, and begin that process. And if you would like any help that we absolutely certainly can help you and we'd love to, you just need to let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, it always boils down. It always boils down to the internal relationship you have with your own feelings so that, that you uh, get the inner space to be able to bring your attention inward. Right, because as long as I'm holding this idea that my feelings are bad, right, or they're difficult, or and I can't deal with the discomfort, and I shouldn't be feeling that way, I won't go there. Right, I simply won't. <laughs> but if suddenly it's like, well, maybe they aren't as bad. Maybe they've just gotten bad press. <laughs> maybe they're not as bad as I thought they were. And then little by little, you. You, you, well, yeah, it's an uncomfortable feeling, but it's not killing me. I don't have to run away from it. And then eventually you realize, my God, it's just my feelings. <laughs> That's all they are. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> yeah. And our feelings change. And I, and it's based. Of course. Oh, they're, yes. They're, I was going to say, wait, does the story change or do our feelings change? But our feelings are just um, uh, feedback from what's going on at that present moment yeah feelings are are always ad ad adaptive and reactive yes yeah, yeah. they're always are responding they, they're 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 never initiating they're right. always reactive right and when there's nothing to react to you're at peace but the mind is very active creating things to react to all of which are imaginary and so, you know, that, as I was outlining before, to go get out of the mind and into the feelings, 
you you find the feeling directly, you see that simply the nervous system as it interacts with the environment with no story, right? And yeah. that's where peace begins to emerge. Mm. Well, thank you for showing us where peace emerges. I like that. <laughs> uh, GP Walsh, it is wonderful to be here with you at Ohm School Live every Tuesday. Please join us. And uh, yes, I'll, we'll we'll keep on checking into the comments and stuff throughout the week. But um, just thank you so much. Oh, there we go. Something came up. Do we need to answer? No. Sorry. No, okay. I just I just I just bumped it. That's all. <laughs> go. Well, thank you for your comments. We'll we'll continue as I continue to check in with them and, and watch them. But otherwise, we hope to see you the next show. Until then.